Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Wow, it is 23 hours and 13 minutes into the 27th day of November 2021. And we're beginning our observation vlog. We had uh, two uh, westbound trains come by. We heard the horns uh, uh, coming from the east, uh, from the field. and They weren't terribly loud, but they were sufficient that the, you could tell which direction they were traveling in. Uh, as I said before, you, you do, once you're out here enough, you can begin to pick up the clues as to what is what. And this is one of the more difficult parts of science. Uh, of research is the observational work. Uh, most people sit down and work on uh, the mathematical, but as I said before, if you go into the ultimate of, of, of the science and mathematics, this is basically quantum physics and uh, 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 particle theory, this is when we talk about parallel universes. Well, the problem is that after the third dimension we're even bringing in the dimension of time, which is both perpendicular and per 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 both perpendicular and parallel to all the spaces, all the axes of spaces of space uh, simultaneously. In other words, there. This is where Euclidean geometry begins to break, break down, and you can only approximate what's there, uh, even when in, 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 in sort of with Euclidean space. Uh, the three dimensions is still, once again, only approximated. As you go through your studies and you look for this sort of nature of approximation and see that not only does it appear in the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, but it appears even at the core of calculus, the whole nature of cal the fundamental nature of calculus is you're dealing with an approximation. You're not dealing with the actual thing itself. Uh, this is why calculus has as its fundamental, fundamental basis is the limit and everything else is based off the limit. And the limit is, fundamentally speaking, uh, how close you can get to an asymptotic point that is infinitely far away. And the understanding is, of course, that uh, the point is infinitely far away. You will never actually achieve it. So you approximate, okay, how close can I get to say that we're seeing some degree of an effect of this? Now, they too went, others went further and said that this is what it is, but it's not actually what it is. It's simply an approximation. It may be a very good approximation, but it's still an approximation nonetheless. In other words, there is no way to predict what's going to happen. And this was, this is what sort of what led to the end of modernism, which had sort of stated, built this sort of case on, uh, on the misunderstanding of calculus, that calculus could actually get you to a particular mathematical proof. And so, anyway, oh, yeah, we're going to sit down and work on mathematical proofs and you have all these people working on equations and this and that and so on and so forth uh, but not really getting to the end point that they need to get to because it doesn't matter how good their work is in terms of their calculations or whatever they're still working on an approximation even if you're doing sort of like you know doing genetic work and you figure out the genetic structure of x y and z uh you know in terms of the uh, the, the <laughs> The thing you're looking at, and it could be a variety of different life, like, forms of life, uh, you do get the, the genetic structure. That still doesn't really mean anything because even if you have the exact duplication, which is a twin, twins, the maternal twins, who were born from the same egg, a splitting of the egg, that's what they talk about chimerism and so on and so forth. Uh, and this is the sort of some of the evidence of this are Siamese twins. Uh, this is the nature of the chimera. Is uh, instead of having one person, you have two people. They're two fundamentally different bodies that are fused together. This is sort of an understanding. That it is a medical oddity. Uh, the study of medical oddities is is, is an amazing thing because uh, you look at things. You, you 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 take the assumption that we know we have this absolute mass mass of knowledge. And when you go start looking at uh, these uh, medical uh, uh, anomalies, uh, the medical oddities, you begin to realize that our knowledge is very minute. And this is sort of what comes out as if people try to sort of approach them, sort of do their thing on Twitter. And you'll have these researchers come out and make these pronouncements. But then 
later on, they're sort of taken back by it because they uh, kind of miss some of the aspects that were sort of came through because they weren't able to predict predict everything. They got bits of it right. They got bits and pieces of it right, but they didn't have the entire thing. And so there goes that prediction. And this is, you know, also true for the epidemiologists. It's that the ep epidemiologists are your ones who work on the so-called, they're, they're, these are, I call them the, the, the ones, the, the disciples of the Da Vinci Code. This is what it is. It's, it's prim again, once again, it's a belief. It's not necessarily anything that's fundamental. And again, they, they believe they can predict these things. And you would go, look like, go back and look at history and begin to realize that they couldn't predict anything. I mean, these, th there are a lot of people that say, oh, yes, we have the solution. Well, okay, but did, did, you, did you develop the atomic bomb? Were you, were you Enrico Fermi, who sort of, went, as his experimental work was done, was able to produce the atomic bomb, the first reaction to go, the first uh, uh, chain reaction to go, that this is what the atomic bomb was built off of? Uh, no, <laughs> unless, you're, unless you're Enrico Fermi, unless you were doing what he was doing, it doesn't matter what you do in terms of hindsight, in terms of your calculations, he's the one who did the work. The same thing with the transistor, you know, were you the one who developed the, the chemical equation uh, for the, for the uh, transistor that produced the first transistor? And the thing is, when you look at that again, it was done experimentally, with the mathematical predictions were off. And so what happens is you look at these, these discoveries in history, and these things that sort of changed the world, and this includes Tesla. No one believed at the time that Tesla knew what he was doing. And the same, but at the same time, that Tesla worked from observation, and from his observation, he developed his theory. Uh, and, but yet, here, why is Tesla stuff primarily missing? Because it's all top secret. It was, it was stuff that was for, considered to be forbidden information because it brought out too many things that, that people thought could be weaponized, and so therefore it was forbidden knowledge from history. And this is why Tesla has never really given credit uh, for uh, the AC motor because it violates the early understandings of how the laws of nature work. And this is, this is a large chunk of why you have people in terms of the environmental, in terms of their belief, being against electricity, actually. Electricity itself, most electricity is AC. And they believe that it harms the earth, that, that there are frequencies, sacred frequencies. And the first thing that the, sort of disturbs the earth is, is electricity. Then, of course, now you have 5G. Again, 5G interrupts some of these sacred frequencies uh, of the earth. And so, therefore, they're against it. Again, it's based on religious belief. It's not based on uh, actual research. Uh, people come up and show different aspects of things and why it's dangerous. But... The, the testing is uh, the testing does not go is not is not sufficient. The testing is not sufficient to demonstrate the, the, the realities of the danger. What happens is that the data is cherry picked to show the, the, the dangers. So it's not it's not that the work itself is dangerous in terms of the the actual uh, uh, cost of the human being, but it's, it's the it's the data that's cherry picked that comes up. That says, ah, this is dangerous. Well, no, because you cherry picked the data, and th this is a sort of the same thing. What happens is that most people, when you're dealing with something that's called DURC, D, uh, D U R C, uh, uh, dual use research of concern, and virology is that because you have uh, bio warfare comes out of vi comes out of virology. Again, it's nothing new. Uh, we've been doing the, the sort of the virology uh, bio warfare since uh, 1930s. It came out of the Soviet Union. We picked it up in the 1990s uh, when the Berlin Wall fell. We sent our scientists in in terms of the West, and um, that's how we picked everything up. And we've been doing work ever since. I mean, the, 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 understand that the Zika virus. Uh, I'm not going to say it was deliberately man-made, but it was a sort of a sort of a from the perspective of of the scientists a happy circumstance that the Zika virus emerged because it was it was with within the crowd of mosquitoes it was in the group of mosquitoes that had been genetically modified. So the Zika virus as a consequence 
uh, as a consequence of genetic meddling. And again, it's not something that that was predicted. It wasn't something that was sort of within the control. In other words, it wasn't a controlled experiment. This was something that once they said, oh, yeah, 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 the lab, works, lab stuff works, and we can say that it works in, the, in, in, in reality. It works in uh, the dynamic environment. Well, they, lo and behold, they let mosquitoes go. What happens? Uh, the viruses mutate, and all of a sudden now, instead of having uh, malaria, you have the Zika virus. Uh, taking the place of malaria uh, within the mosquito population. And this is what produced, uh, again, a whole bunch of birth defects. This is the microcephaly. Uh, uh, and it was all in the it w in the areas where they had released mosquitoes. Where did they re release the mosquitoes? They did it into the slave populations of South America and uh, uh, Middle America, That's the, around the Caribbean islands. So it now, it, it's now reached all the way into Florida. And it's, but the thing is, this is our own creation. This is something that we've done. But again, it, you've heard it from the, the UN has never shied away from state, stating that it, it is interested in population control. But the thing is, the whole concept of population control and saving the earth is not science. It's not based on this research. It's based on a religion. It's based on a belief uh, that's hidden from public view. But the thing is, it, it, uh, this is what I said before, th that doesn't necessarily mean... mean that the people who are involved in the program don't believe what's going on in terms of their, their need for population control. In many cases, they certainly do believe in this. So how do you get something that's not sort of palatable? You know, oh, we're going to kill X number of people on a regular basis. How do you get the society to agree to it? Well, you do what, what, ha what happened in 1945 with, 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 with Hitler. How did Hitler get to the point where he got to where you had all these sort of uh, Jews being sent to their death, well, he was able to get consensus from the crowd, from the people of Germany, that this is something that needed to be done, that they were actually helping these people. Uh, all these people are sick, they're defective, and we need to get, we need to sort of euthanize them, so, uh, you know, they're not living a happy life, and how would you, you know, how would you feel if you did this, you know, we, we, we uh, in terms of a horse that is sick, that is, the, that is dying, we don't just let it there and let it sit there and suffer. We put it. We put it. To, we put it to, to, to sleep. Right? Do the thing with dog. The dog is getting old. Oh, oh, not doing too well. Where are we? Eh? Rather than suffering, we're not. We're, we're, we're going to put the dog out of its misery. Uh, and you say, you know, they have a little party, and everyone says goodbye to the dog, and they take him to this uh, in this room where it now has a dying room, and you put the dog to sleep. And goodbye, you know, goodbye, doggy. You know, doggy's going away. He's not coming back again. And, you know, maybe he's going up to doggy heaven. Well, this is what we have now today in in, in our hospitals. We don't have enough room for, for sick people anymore. Uh, we don't have enough doctors in there. But we do have enough room for dying rooms where you can euthanize your, you know, grandma or, or, or your elderly mother. And oh, grandma's not doing so well. Uh, we're going to have to put her to sleep. Same thing for the dogs, now for the elderly people. We've got consensus. The consensus was built, the consensus was, the consensus to start killing people based on this concept of human compassion, that killing people is a, is a compassionate thing to do. This is what was done in 1945. You can sort of see the history of this. You can see that, at the, that, that when Hitler came along, he was at the end point of social conditioning. This was social engineering. This was humanist social engineering. I said, in order to heal the, the society, in order to make it better, to get rid of the sickness within society, to engineer it out of the system, you had to get rid of the people who were causing the problem. So what happens? You, you added this group in. Oh, it didn't work. Oh, it's these people. These are the people who are causing the problem here. It's the unvaccinated. Let's put them to sleep. Then you have, let's say, well, you know, these people, they only had two vaccinations. Maybe they need the third and the fourth. Let's put those, let's put the ones who haven't had the, the you know, uh, uh, they've had the two vaccines, they've had the two shots. Let's put those to sleep and, and leave the uh, third and fourth. When the third and fourth don't work, you go out and get rid of these people. And you bring, and then you bring in the, you, you bring in eventually bring in the people with the fifth, the fifth shot. And it's still not working. So maybe you, get, get, you have to get rid of, 
Oh, let's get you another, say, uh, a couple uh, a couple million people. Oh, let's say 10 million people. Because this was, was, this was, was done in Ukraine. Uh, you had uh, 6 million Jews uh, in 1945. This is 6 million Jews out of close to 200 million people uh, uh, in Europe and uh, in, in, in the Middle East who sort of, you know, ended up dying uh, because of this particular uh, perspective on uh, social engineering. I said, the, if you read the sort of the, go back and read some of these uh, uh, articles and paper that come out of the, from different uh, the so-called authors of self, uh, of of the social engineering of humanism, you begin to realize that this whole nature of killing people as a solution to social problems in terms of social engineering has always been there. It's never been. It's never. It was always there in the fine print. It was never brought out. In other words. The people who were doing the rhetoric, the sales, never came. Oh, yes, we're going to kill millions of people. What is it? Oh, we need to protect people. These people are, not, are causing problems. They're a danger to you. We need to get rid of these people who are, are a danger. But then again, they're always suffering. They're suffering themselves. They don't understand what the things are. So first you try to re-educate them. When they're re-educating and, and the camps don't work and the re-education camps, then you get rid of them. You euthanize them. This is what's going on today. The researchers on Twitter, the ones that I've seen, and I'm sort of compiling a list of this, they're all bringing out the dangers of, of, of the vaccine. And the so-called technology that's coming up, which is not really a new technology, it's an old technology. It's just simply being reworded as such. It's, it's, it's a reimagination of what, was, of what was there originally. And the thing is, it, what was there originally in terms of the genetic engineering never really worked. And so this was known as, oh, yeah, but this time, it's gonna, this time will be different. Well, this time it was never, wasn't different. And the thing is, so, so why, they ask, why they are so confounded when other researchers who are doing their work and getting funding from the dollars that put into, the tax dollars that go into the uh, saving the lives of the, from people who are, who are exposed to the pandemic, no, these people are turning their paychecks away. They're not quitting their jobs saying, oh, sorry, my principles won't allow me to do this. They're not doing that. They're simply p- passing the buck, they're rewarding things. And then, then they, they act surprised. Oh, why is this not stopping? Well, because you're not, you haven't walked away from your job. If you're participating, this is, this is what, 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 the way it was in the early society in, 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 in the 1930s and stuff like that. Going, get, heading towards the, the Holocaust. And the thing is, you use this because there are a number of Jews that I know now who are bringing this in, in, into their vocabulary. And it's not coming from, it's not coming from you know, uh, these right-wing uh, anarchist websites. It's coming from the Jews within, with, within, the orthodox, within the orthodox persuasion. These people understand that they're being targeted once again. Because again, it's not these are the Jews at the top who are who are involved is like George Soros, yeah, but he's not a Jew. George Soros is either a, Can- a, a, a Canaanite or he's an atheist. He, he, he is, uh, you have to understand, and, and, I, and I was able to sort of pick up a source today and, and a couple of days ago, uh, that it's the, it's a Hasidic Jew describing the structure of Jews who isn't, who isn't a Jew, uh, under the Judaic law and under the sort of girl, the rabbinical code and how people within the Jewish society are stacked according to uh, their their uh, well, like I say, their kosherness. Uh, how strictly you adhere to the law determines the level at which you are a Jew. And of course, at the top of the ladder are your Hasidic Jews who who isolate themselves from the rest of society. And this is where people talk about, the, you hear about the, the Jewish ghettos, that, that the, 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 the racists, the supremacists put all these Jews in these ghettos. And the answer is no. Uh, a large chunk of the Jews who were in the ghetto were Hasidic Jews. Uh, these Hasidic Jews uh, had a practice of staying away, creating their own societies, and living in their own sort of quarters, uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to sort of put it. Uh, so they created their own cities, their own uh, environments, and, and it just what happens is that because they did this, they became very convenient targets. Because 
here's a group of people who were living outside the norm and saying, oh, you see those guys over there? They're the cause of all your problems. Right? Just like the unvaxxed. The un well, what's happening with the unvaxxed now? You see this in Australia. Well, the, you have all these people there. They're the, one, they're, they're the cause of all your problems. This is why we have the, the reason why we have the Omicron vi uh, uh, variant is because of the unvaxxed people. This is what happens. So now they have an excuse to cart these people off, put them in the camps, and this is you know this is sort of the nature of things. But they don't also don't realize these are the same people who, uh, in terms of their nature of humanism, uh, have no problem uh, euthanizing the defectives. It's the same word in the same speech that you have under humanism, whether it's either communism. Or, or Nazism, which is your, again, this will get, bring it down to, the Nazis are your genetics, your uh, eugenics, they're the people who talk about genes and genetic and genetic structure, genetic engineering, this is, uh, well, <laughs> your GMO products, this is who these all people are. Uh, uh, anyone who talks about neurology and brain science and the, the, your behaviors in your brain, well, that's that as well. And so what happens is you see we're, we're actually doing, in some cases we're doing uh, both the uh, Gnostic and the observation because you can't do this observation without understanding the Gnostic. <clears throat> again, this is, again, this is a belief. And the thing is, if, tw if you did have indeed, this is, I, I sort of remembering that, that I talked about before, if you had indeed that your emotions and your behavior were genetically oriented, then why don't twins, the maternal twins, act like people who, who, who are exactly the same? I know maternal twins. They're different from each other. They have different behaviors. They have different feelings, different thoughts, different, you know, different experiences. So if it's genetic, then why do you have these differences? And so this, this is what, again, the neurologists, these neuroscientists, they'll ignore the whole thing. They simply ignore it and work on it on the premise Oh, that doesn't exist. And they'll completely ignore it. They'll pass it out. Well, it's, that's not reality. Well, it is reality. It's not your reality. It's not what you see on, on the bench, but you take go outside the bench in terms of neurology and see that these people are thinking differently. Well, we've done our brain scan. Well, how did you do the brain scan? How did you get the scan of the brain? You put the person in a closed situation in a room and you have the person do X, Y, and Z in terms of a, a sort of a a procedural movement, or they follow the procedure, and then you read, you, you sort of saw how the different areas of their brain. Well, how much of the brain, the brain was was discomfort? How, you know, because not, people are are not often comfortable in, in environments so that they're not that they're not familiar with. It. So you're going into a new environment. You know, how does this work? Put the person in there time and time again, who eventually adjusts to the environment. And ask them as they as you have this progress, what do you see? But that again never comes out. You come up with these slides, these you know momentary sort of snapshots uh, of the whole thing. And saying this is in the pronouncement, this is what's happening. Well, no, that's not what's happening. That's that situation at that particular moment. That's what you're showing me. It does not indicate that this is true for all situations. But again, the, 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 the neurologists and the neuroscientists will extend this, the one snapshot, into all cases, all environments. And this is not the right way to do science. It's, this is simply, but again, this is how they need to get their funding. To get your funding, they, you need to create this sort of sense, of, oh, yes, we're getting, we're getting places. We, are, we have a definite understanding. Of, this is what's going on. I mean, you can't go in there and shrug your shoulders with uh, yeah, we just spent another $50 million. We're going to need more because, uh, well, we really don't know what we're doing. We're kind of getting a better idea of it, but, you know, <laughs> you're not going to get your money. You're not, you're not going to get refunded, and you're going to have to, go out, have to go out and get a regular job. Of course, no researcher wants to do that. Go on, oh, get out and get a regular job. Well, no way. I'm not going to do that. I've got a nice car. I've got, I've got a car. I've got a boat. I've got a nice house. Well, I should even have a House and I got a house that's uh, in the cottage. I have a cottage house. I have, I have a, a summer house. I have a winter house and a summer house. I spend my you know 
my summers in the co- at the cottage at the lake, you know, I got my boat and everything, and, you know, that stuff doesn't pay for itself. I'm going to need this uh, money to do that. So, so what happens, you have, again, this sort of creation of a vassal state, because these vassals are making the money they, they want to have, the things they want, and they're not going to, going to give it up, and so they will continue along doing their, what they're doing, even if X number of people get killed. I mean, this is what happened. This is what happened uh, uh, in Auschwitz. How does Auschwitz? How was Auschwitz created? Because everyone had their job. Everyone did what they were supposed to do, and no one questioned anything. Because they had gotten to the point where they were at that point in time comfortable with the idea of euthanizing people to help them and to help the world to save the world. We need to make the world a better place. We need to reduce suffering. These people have to go. We're sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll have dying rooms. So now this time, instead of instead of having instead of having you know people being shoved into ovens uh, and gas, now that what they're going to do is uh, this is sort of the wholesale case. They're going to have dying rooms. They'll have oh yes, we're, goodbye grandmother, good grandmom. I know she's terminally ill. She was wasn't well. He walking too well. So we had to say goodbye to her. <laughs> But this is, the, and then the thing—it sounds funny, but this is the reality. It, 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 you, you would you would think that this would be an absurdist comedy, but this is today's reality. And this is, this is what I'm saying. I was sort of coming into this, thinking about Ados and Yvette Carnell. The government is not going to ever, ever, give you what you want. Because they never, they were never created to give what you want. The government is an illusion; it's not real. They're not there to be fair to you. That's my choice: is get rid of the government. Well, get put people in there who will give you the least amount of government and let you deal with things the way you want to deal with them. You want health care? Then you and you want universal free health care? Fine. You learn medicine. You learn how to dispense the medicine. Then you give it away for free. That's universal health care. You don't, you know, you spend the 15, 20 years in school needed to get the get, get the education for uh, to do become a doctor, and then you give it away. That's philanthropy. That's the reality of philanthropy. If you want universal free health care. Otherwise, you're gonna have to find a way to pay for it if you want to give it away. And the thing is that for ADOS. The United, the United States, you know, American descendants of slaves. Do you understand how far and wide globally the United States has been involved in regime change and imperial standing for decades? There are slaves that are, this is why I brought up the, uh, uh, America, the, the Syrian and Greek slaves. Because they had, my uncles were sharecroppers. And their fruit, you know, you go go get, get a can of peaches, and you look at the you get a can of peaches. This is from Del Monte, and there's other off brands as well. And they go, oh, made, made in Greece. Well, what, 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 how does this Greek peaches get into this can? Simple, because you have sharecroppers in Greece working on these farms. Where do they, go look at look go look at the history of avocados? Look at what's going on in terms of avocado farming. That's slavery. Look at um, bananas. Go ahead, look at the history of bananas. That's slavery as well. So you've got slaves currently, literally all over the globe, and they're not, so, so. What happens? They're not going to admit to this. They're not going to, 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 to tell you this is what it is. This is this is where you're going to realize is that the term ADOS is there to keep you as a slave. As long as they can keep you in the mindset that you're a slave, that you cannot live without them, without the government, without government structure. They've got you. And you will never improve. You will never see improvement. This should be a, a wake-up call, not simply about uh, not having Democrats use you ever again. You've got to realize that these people, are you, you're their cause. As long as you remain ADOS, a slave, you remain within that mindset, the Democrats own you. You have to walk away. You have, and there's a, I want to help you. I want to help the people she's trying to help. I want to have these people have a better life. The only way to get rid of slavery and the mindset of slavery is to walk away from slavery. 
It's not going to be an easy thing, but people did it. People have done it. My, my Greek relatives have done it. My, my Syrian relatives have done this. Almost any, 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 uh, any immigrant who's come in, even the Africans when they came in, have done this. And I think the, the ADOS needs to learn from this. Need, ADOS needs to take these lessons of these immigrants who came in who were slaves themselves. Because you have, you have the fruit company, you have these avocado farms all over the world. Coffee, chocolate, these farms are all plantations. The slavery is still there. What do you think of the trafficking of, of women is? What do you think of the whole thing of, of, of the trial on Disney and Maxwell? What's involved? Who's involved? Well, Disney, Universal Studios, all your major mu movie companies, all your, 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 your entertainment industry, they're all there. They're all listed as co-defendants. They're all involved in slavery. It's still going on today. The only way to, to get rid of to, to, to deal with it is to get is to get rid of the Democrats' causes. The way you get rid of the cause is the, person, the people have to stand up and leave. Don't play the victim anymore. And there's a lot of way, different ways to do this. And I'm willing to help in any way that I possibly can. I said I'm anti-establishment. I don't believe in violence. I think there's always a way around violence that you don't have to get violent, that, to, that you can actually resolve these issues and be anti-establishment, get the stuff done that you need to sort of pull people out of the causes and leave, leave the Democrats with nothing. Let the causes die with no pe people in them. This is how you win. Anyways, uh, that's it for now. I think we've got our... Uh, We've got our, um, uh, what should I say, our, 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 our Gnosis vlog in here as well. Uh, I will talk about Gnosis again probably tomorrow night. Uh, there's still some more stuff I'm working on. That's fundamentally it, and uh, it's time to, time to do the transitions vlog, so I'll be going on to that next. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Oh!